For the exception of most expensive European drilling guns, most combination guns have a history of being cheap, low-quality guns that shoot horribly or were riddled with quality issues. The earlier Savage Model 24s were the exception to this rule and were actually considered to be one of the best combo guns ever made and also the best quality Savage product ever made. In this video, I'll take you for a walk down memory lane and introduce you to my favorite combo gun of all time, the Savage Model 24. The Model 24 essentially started life in 1938 as the Stevens Model 22 410. It had a 22 long rifle upper barrel and a 410 shotgun lower barrel and could easily be broken down for storage. The U.S. Army Air Corps purchased over 15,000 of these guns for pilots to use as survival guns during World War II. In 1950, the Stevens Model 22 410 became the Savage Model 24. Savage expanded the barrel combinations over the years to include upper barrels chambered in 22 long rifle, 22 magnum, 22 hornet, 222, 223, 3030, and 357. And lower shotgun barrels were chambered for 410, 20 gauge, and 12 gauge. Up until the early 70s, barrels were joined together in a carefully machined groove and then brazed together, giving it the look and feel of a quality European over and under. The first generation Model 24s had a tang mounted barrel release and a receiver mounted sliding barrel selector button. These were known as the Model 24, 24A, and 24B guns. The receiver mounted barrel selector did have some reliability issues, so Savage redesigned the barrel selector as an integral part of the hammer assembly and released the Model 24E in 1962. These Model 24E guns proved to be extremely reliable, so reliable that Savage offered conversions for the older guns with the receiver mounted uh, barrel selectors, and these were known as 24E conversions. All Model 24s made after 1962 had the barrel selector integrated into the hammer. Some people don't really like the tang mounted barrel release, so Savage came out with the 24S models. The S stood for side lever because the barrel release was moved to the side of the receiver as a lever. Most receivers had a very durable black paint job, but some had beautiful case hardened receivers. Most deluxe models had satin chrome receivers, and some even had engraving. To reduce production costs, Savage eventually cheapened the Model 24 by separating the barrels with the C, D, F, and V models. Some of these models even had a trigger guard mounted barrel release that proved to be unpopular among shooters. A short camper's companion model with 20 inch barrels was also made, and even a survival rifle version was manufactured. Almost all of these fixed choke Model 24s came with a full choked barrel. The camper's companion model though came with a cylinder choke barrel. Some of the later specialty guns actually came with screw in choke tubes. Many of these models came in a DL or deluxe version with better wood, checkering and a better finish. Savage even had some variants of the Model 24 made in Finland and Italy. Later in production, Savage even sold Turkey and Predator models. The bottom line is that the Model 24 came in an endless variety of configurations and chamberings over its long history. So much so that nobody has definitively kept track of when and why most configurations were made. There was absolutely no rhyme or reason to how Savage made Model 24 configurations. To further confuse matters, Savage made many of these variations concurrently with other variations and even dropped variations from their line only to bring them back later. The Model 24 just might be the most confusing firearm ever made. What we do know is that Savage began gradually cheapening the line 
and sacrificing quality in the later years. To collectors and shooters, the older Model 24s with the joined barrels are considered to be the best shooters and to have the best craftsmanship. With any double barreled gun, the number one issue that's gonna make it a good gun or a bad gun is barrel regulation. Barrel regulation is the ability of two barrels on the same gun to shoot to a desired point of aim at a given distance. You know, and achieving this takes expert craftsmanship and or tedi a, a tedious adjustment process before the two barrels are permanently joined together. This is why good shooting over and under guns in the shotgun world and expensive European drilling guns cost so much damn money because those guns are regulated properly when you buy them and they've gone through the process of proper regulation. The older Model 24s with the uh, fitted and joined barrels like this one are known for being more accurate and for regulating better than the newer split barrel design. Most of the split barrel model 24s that I've seen have a shotgun barrel that just shoots ridiculously low and often to the side. I've seen people try to wedge coins and other things between the barrels to try to get them to regulate better, you know, with mixed results. By contrast, the older fitted and joined barrel model 24s seem to regulate pretty well. This is my favorite Model 24 of all time. It's a Model 24S-E. It has the uh, uh, side receiver barrel release lever on it, which I really like. I like it better than the tang mounted one it, it, because it doesn't get in the way at all. Um, it's also got the good uh, uh, barrel selector on the hammer, which I also really like. And uh, it's a combination of my favorite small game cartridge and my favorite shotgun cartridge. You know, it's got a uh, 22 Magnum upper barrel over a 20 gauge shotgun barrel. You know, and uh, arguably, this is the perfect combination for a gun like this. You know, I want this gun to shoot the 22 Magnums pretty much dead on at about 50 yards. And I want the 20 gauge shotgun barrel to shoot well at 25 yards. You know, this is basically a gun I like using for walking around in the desert and putting down quail and rabbits. So let's go to the range and put some 20 gauge shells and some 22 magnums down range and uh, see how this gun regulates. Okay, so I cleaned this gun thoroughly before I took it to the range and shot it, just so uh, there's no issues with uh, with a dirty or foul bore here. And, uh, you know, I really scrubbed this 22 barrel, which was filthy. I guess uh, I'd shot it a lot without cleaning it. And uh, I shot these uh, 22 mag TNT greens through this because uh, I am in California and I have to use non-toxic and uh, this is my favorite 22 mag and non-toxic so this is the group I shot right here as you saw in that film and you can see this was the first shot right here on a totally clean bore and that was basically the fouling shot and after that this gun shot an absolutely fantastic group at 50 yards and remember this is with iron sights and my poor eyesight so this 22 magnum barrel right here has a lot of good accuracy potential 
you know, having these barrels joined together the entire length makes it a very rigid platform that enhances accuracy, in my opinion. Now, uh, let's take a look at the uh, 20 gauge barrel and see how that shoots. Okay, since this is an older gun that isn't rated for shooting steel shot, I opted to shoot 20 gauge bismuth. So this is with bismuth right here. And uh, this is the pattern I got off of it. And look at that. See if I can zoom this out a little bit for you. I mean, that's... Uh, that's pretty much uh, my pattern right there. And I'd say uh, that's pretty damn good right there. But uh, I will say that the point of aim, point of impact, was a little bit low at first. And I was, a, I was using that classic center hold sight picture. Then I went with a combat sight picture where... The sight covers the target, and the pattern was just dead on. Then I got off the bench, stood up, and found out that my natural aim with this rifle is the combat hold. So this gun is good to go. And this is why properly patterning a shotgun and determining point of aim, point of impact is so important before you hunt. This gun right here is regulated about as good as it gets for a combo gun. And I'm really happy with it. This particular gun is a Savage 24 S-E. And this was made in the early 1970s. And like I said earlier, it has a, a 22 Magnum top barrel and a 20 gauge bottom barrel, which is uh, absolutely my favorite combination of cartridges for a gun like this. The barrels on this gun are also super thick and substantial. You know, the shotgun barrel in particular is about two times thicker than a modern shotgun barrel. You know, these older Model 24s were just over-engineered in every aspect. And now we're going to see how much this gun weighs. So it looks like this particular gun weighs 7 pounds, 11 ounces. That's 7 pounds... 11.7 ounces so 7 pounds 11 ounces and uh you know be mindful that this gun is probably slightly heavier than yours because it has a limb saver recoil pad on it and i installed uh sling swivel studs on it so it's going to be a little bit heavier than your gun if you have the exact model but i mean it's safe to say it's a 7 pound 11 ounce gun This gun has a fully choked barrel. It's a fixed choke, full, uh, full choke barrel. So I wouldn't run rifled slugs or buckshot through it and expect any kind of good patterns or accuracy with that. This gun was made to shoot birdshot out of the shotgun barrel. So that's what I feed it. It also wasn't made to shoot steel shot. So I only feed this gun letter bismuth and I'm mostly hunting here in California. So I almost always feed it 20 gauge bismuth, but uh, honestly, the fully choked barrel on this uh, short 24 inch barrel on this makes it more useful in the patterning department, in my opinion. You know, with a short 24 inch barrel, if this was maybe 
an improved cylinder or something like that, it uh, probably wouldn't pattern that good. So um, if you're wondering why most of these guns came with uh, a fixed full choke on them, it's because the barrel's so short. The break open action on this gun is just as beefy and slick as a browning over and under shotgun of the same vintage. This gun is completely original and pretty much just how it came from the factory, except uh, I did add a limb saver recoil pad on the back, which uh, I thought was a pretty good upgrade. And uh, I also installed the uh, Mike's sling swivel studs on it. And I'll put a link to those in the description below. But uh, this gun is so well built that it's never had one part replaced and still functions perfectly. You know, I have spare firing pins for this in storage, but I've never had to replace them. This is also the factory original finish on this. I've never refinished this gun at all. And uh, it's held up exceptionally for a 50 year old gun that's been used hard. You know, in my opinion, Savage has never made a higher quality product than the older Model 24s like this one. The Model 24 is a heavier gun than your average shotgun or rimfire rifle meant for hunting. But it should be because it's two rifles in one. You know, it has two barrels, so of course it's going to be heavier. But uh, it's not overly heavy. You know, it weighs in at about seven and a half pounds. You know, it's lighter than many over and under shotguns that I've carried, especially the older ones. And it's certainly lighter than most center fire, center fire hunting rifles with a scope on it. So carrying one in the field is pretty easy. And like I mentioned earlier, you can add Uncle Mike's swing swivel studs onto it and uh, carry it on a sling if you'd like that'll make it easier but uh, I've actually put a lot of meat on the grill with this gun you know it points well and it's just a joy to shoot you know I keep the selector on this on the uh, shotgun barrel while I'm walking around hunting so I'm ready for any quail that suddenly flushes or bunnies that pop out and run on me but if I spot a rabbit or a squirrel, you know, stationary just out of shotgun range, I'll flip on the 22 Magnum barrel and take a shot with the 22 Magnum. That's basically how I hunt with this combo gun. These old Model 24s will get the job done. I've handled several Russian MP94 combo guns. And I even handled one of the rebranded Remington ones. And I'll say that the quality isn't as good as the older joined barrel Model 24s, but it is better than the late Model 24s. The MP94 also has the same regulation issues that many of the split barrel Model 24s suffered from and often need creative methods of shimming to get them shooting right. In addition to this, the trigger on the MP94 isn't as good as the Model 24, at least the early Model 24s. And lastly, I don't like the shotgun barrel on top of the rifle barrel. You know, we use sights to shoot a rifle and we point to use a shotgun. So having sights on the shotgun barrel is just stupid to me because we don't aim a shotgun while wing shooting. Like the Model 24, the MP94 came in endless variations that are confusing to anybody who uses or collects them. The Savage Model 42 is an absolute piece of junk in my opinion. If you're smart, you won't waste your money on a Model 42. 
they basically took every aspect of the Model 24 that was expensive and made it exceedingly cheap. Savage cut way too many corners with the Model 42. Springfield also made the M6 Scout combo gun, but honestly, I've never handled one of those, so can't really comment. But the ergonomics of this thing look absolutely horrible to me. The Double Badger is another cheap combo gun currently on the market. It's definitely a huge step down in quality from the old Model 24s, but it's actually not a bad combo gun for the price. The sights are nice, even though the front bead's a little thick, and they seem to regulate well most of the time. And the double triggers aren't too bad if you're accustomed to using, using them. You know, I would never trade my Model 24 for a double badger, but I also wouldn't hesitate to buy one if I really wanted a cheap combo gun. Really, my only gripe with the double badger is that the shotgun barrel is way too short for real bird use. And I'm not being delusional in this review. Not all Model, Model 24s were perfect. You know, in fact, the earlier receiver-mounted barrel selectors had issues and needed to be converted to a hammer-style selector. You know, the late production Model 24s, you know, weren't made to the high-quality standards that the 70s and earlier Model 24s were. And... The split barrel guns, you know, didn't regulate as well as these joined barrel guns did. But this Model 24 SE is absolute perfection in a combo gun for me. You know, it doesn't shoot as good as my Berettas or Benelli shotguns, but it's the best compromise for a combo gun in my opinion. It functions great. It regulates well. And it just has lots of history and nostalgia behind it. You know, shooting one quail with this gun is more satisfying than putting down a half a dozen birds with my A400. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about the Savage Model 24. Be sure to hit subscribe if you find my content worthy of your subscription. If you have any questions or comments for me, you can reach me at Desert Dog Outdoors at gmail.com. That's Desert Dog Outdoors at gmail.com. As always, thank you for watching and good hunting.